My primary responsibility with the foundation is to uh, manage and execute their hate crime training program. And what that encompasses is training state and local and federal police officers and prosecutors to not only identify hate crimes, but investigate and prosecute them as well. I try and share my, my story in hopes that um, we, can, we can come together as a community to provide better support for people uh, after they go through these types of hate crimes. Whatever the hate crime is, it sends that message that that group of people is now under attack. And what that looks like over time is fear. It's expensive as well for all the law enforcement, for the health care, um, for all of the resources that are needed to respond to these types of things. It has a wide-reaching effect that's not only mental health, it's not only the individual who was directly affected, but all of the people attached to them. The biggest viruses we have now is this concept that I came up with called isonection, that we find a significant group of people that are psychologically socially or emotionally isolated, but connected through social media. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of educating people, it's, it's a matter of uh, developing situational awareness, and uh, we talk to students about uh, being good citizens. My main goal and, and a lot of what I do is just trying to make mental health a common topic that people understand, and I think as um, this younger generation continues to grow up, uh, they're becoming more aware of of mental health. Talking about it either with family and friends, support, uh, understanding that you're not alone and that there isn't anything wrong with you are one of the key things. It's not the parent's fault. It could be the cause of uh, something else that happened in his life. It might not be the parent's fault. It, it may be. We don't know. You think of, of any set of parents whose son has just committed a vicious hate crime or mass murder. Can you imagine the trauma these parents are feeling? The siblings, the relatives, the friends, the communities, the bosses, the coworkers, thinking, I didn't know. Number of common characteristics, isolation, uh, disillusionment, a sense of marginalization, uh, no hope. And when you're in that situation and without supports, uh, you're at risk. Who's responsible for keeping you safe? And the answer is all of us, all of us. What we need to do is to be that resource and to be there whenever they're ready to start talking, to be that person who's ready to listen.